We have another incredible archaeological discovery that has been made in Egypt. As we know, archaeologists in Egypt are working on many different locations, and this particular new discovery was made underwater instead of under the sand. I'm Kaylee, and let's just jump right into it. Underwater archaeologists went to explore the Bay of Abu Kir, just 32 kilometers northeast of Alexandria, when they stumbled upon the remnants of a sunken military warship. The ship, dating from the 2nd century BCE, was believed to have been docked beside the Temple of Amun in the sunken city of Thonis Heraclean. When the building collapsed, the ship sank as it was struck by the falling large blocks from the temple. You've most likely heard of this ancient sunken city, that was discovered by French archaeologist Franck Odio and a team from the European Institute for Underwater Archaeology in 2000, after a four-year-long geophysical survey. The research and underwater excavations are still ongoing to this day. For 21 years, the work to uncover this sunken city secret has continued. Frank Godio estimates that roughly 5% of the city has been uncovered so far. The city was founded in the 12th century BCE, and it has been mentioned by quite a few ancient Greek historians. Originally, the city was built on top of adjoining islands in the Nile Delta, intersected by canals with numerous harbors. The temples and other buildings were connected by boats and bridges. The city was the main hub for the collection of taxes. The city had a large temple to the son of Amun, Konsu, who was known to the Greeks as Heracles. During the 6th and the 4th century BCE, the city flourished, and the worship of Amun became more prominent. A large temple of Amun Gereb was located in the middle of the city, and the pharaoh Nectanebo I made many additions to the temple in the 4th century BCE. It's mostly famous for the large 1.99 meter long black granite diorite stele known as the Decree of Nectanebo I, which was discovered in the year 2000. This is the twin of the stele of Naukratis, which was discovered in 1899 in the temple of Amun at the city of Naukratis, some 72 kilometers southeast of Heracleion, on the same branch of the Nile. This was a very unique occasion in the history of archaeology, to have discovered two copies of the same order by Nectanebo I, discovered practically on the spot where they had been originally placed. The stele of Thonis Heracleion seemed to have been buried voluntarily before the sinking of the city. It was placed face down in the soil, after it had been carefully coated with clay to protect the hieroglyphs. The port of the city was Egypt's main hub of international trade prior to the construction of Alexandria in the 2nd century BCE by Alexander the Great. The intensity of maritime activity can be shown by the earlier discoveries of over 70 shipwrecks and more than 700 anchors in the mud of the bay. Gold coins, weights from Athens and giant tablets inscribed with ancient Greek and ancient Egyptian were discovered as well. Among the discoveries were numerous religious artifacts, including almost 5 meter tall stone statues that had been believed to adorn the city's central temple, and limestone sarcophagi that most likely contained mummified animals. Over time, the city struggled due to a combination of earthquakes, tsunamis and rising sea levels, and eventually became so weakened that at the end of the 2nd century AD, the ground on which the city was built started to succumb to soil liquefaction. Soil liquefaction happens when saturated soil loses its strength and stiffness in response to the shaking of an earthquake or other sudden changes, which turns a solid material such as a hard clay into a liquid and buildings collapse. And in the case of Thonis Heracleion, the buildings had collapsed into the water. A number of residents did not leave the city after this occurred and kept residing in the city all the way up to the beginning of the Arab rule in Egypt. Unfortunately, by the end of the 8th century AD, the remnants of the city sank beneath the sea. This is where it currently resides, some 10 meters below sea level and 2.5 kilometers off the coast.
This latest discovery of the military vessel was another unique find. It was almost miraculously detected by a cutting-edge sonar prototype called a sub-bottom profiler. It's an almost 25 meter long ship that was found under approximately 5 meters of hard clay and debris from the temple. The large fallen stones from the temple actually protected the ancient Greek ship. The large fallen stones from the temple actually protected the ancient Greek ship by pinning it down to the bottom of the canal, which then got filled with clay and debris. The design of the ship shows both ancient Egyptian and Greek techniques, as the builders had used mortise and tenon joints, and it was partly constructed out of reused wood. The ship had a flat bottom and keel, and boasted a large sail in combination with oars. This would have allowed the ship to navigate both on the Nile, the Nile Delta, and on the Mediterranean Sea. According to Frank Godio, the discovery of such intact remains of ancient fast ships is very rare. The only comparable Greek-style ship was uncovered by archaeologists in western Sicily in 1971 and is known as the Marsala ship, dating to 235 BCE. The warship is not the only new discovery that has been made in Thonis Heraclean. The archaeologists have uncovered a large Greek cemetery dating to the early 4th century BCE. Beautifully well-preserved Greek vases and other funerary artifacts were found by the underwater archaeologists alongside the northeast entrance canal. This beautifully illustrates the presence of the Greek merchants who resided in the city, as they had established their own institutions. They had a Greek sanctuary close to the huge temple of Amun, and the remnants of both buildings are now intertwined on the seabed. This was discovered when the archaeologists were exploring the underwater ruins of the Temple of Amun, as they discovered Doric columns of a Greek temple as well. Frank Godio told the art newspaper that preserving the objects discovered underwater is a laborious practice. For instance, the recovery of the huge statue of the Nile god Hapi took them two and a half years. We can all agree that uncovering a city is a big undertaking on land, but under the sea and under the sediment, it's a task that may take hundreds of years, he said. This city waited to be rediscovered for 2000 years, so I'm sure it will be patient enough to slowly reveal its glory to us in the upcoming decades. But for now, this was all the information that I could find. If you enjoyed watching, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you like to see more of these kind of videos and click that bell icon if you want to be notified every time I upload. If you haven't seen my previous videos yet, then click the card in the upper right corner. I have links in the description down below and I've had... And I've put videos in the end card. I'd also like to say a massive thanks to my patrons, Richard, Barry, Scott, James, Floyd, Vaughn, Rox, ProbleDC and NGC6543. And I would like to thank my channel members, Neighbors Guy, Yellow Hammer, Henry Hewitt and Steven Jenny. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Ow, oh, I bit my tongue. Ew. It's mostly famous for the large 1.99 meter long black granodi- No. No, 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 no.